Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to worship with the University Christian Church. I'm Reverend Megan Pegler, the senior minister here, and I am so glad to see all of your faces this morning. Welcome also to everyone who is joining us for worship online. Uh, especially if you are a visitor, we'd love for you to fill out um, the cards that are in your pew backs. There's also a QR code on the back of your bulletin um, letting us know of your attendance with us today. It's a big day in the life of the church as we say farewell to Reverend Chelsea McCutcheon. It's her last worship service with us. She will be working through this week. So if any of you want to drop by and chat with her, um, say hello, any of that, you can do so um, this week through Thursday. Uh, and today there will be a reception in the fellowship hall for us to um, continue to uh, share our well wishes and our gratitude for everything she has done for University Christian Church in the last almost five years. So we are um, grateful for her and are excited about where God has called her to next. Um, and we will, a little bit later in the service, take some time to bless and recognize her further. And now, friends, peace to you, and welcome to this time of worship. Praise God who calls us into the work of mending, rebuilding, and repairing. The kingdom of God is here. Please rise in body or in spirit as you are able, and please join in singing hymn number 461.
please join me in the litany of praise. Let us worship God with justice, even as we sing and pray. Let us keep the fast God chooses on this day and every day. Lift your voice for liberation. Speak the truth and never fear. For the God of our salvation, even now, is drawing near. Please be seated. You'll see on the back of your bulletin a list of prayer concerns. Those that are in bold are new prayers. And to this list, I'd like to um, add the recent um, bombing in Lviv, Ukraine. Um, our friend, Lesa, who sang with the choir um, throughout the school year, lives in Lviv, and the rockets flew over her apartment. She could hear them. Um, and there's been a lot of destruction. Ten people died, more were injured. So we will continue to pray for peace. You will notice that the pastoral prayer is responsive. So when you hear me say, oh God, in your mercy, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. So I will say, oh God, in your mercy, and you will say, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you've laced our lives with blessing. You uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. You are faithful, compassionate, and offer rest to all who make their home in you. We confess that we're tired and weighed down by the mistakes we've made, by the burdens of life but still we are buoyed by the good news of your abundant and steadfast love. O oh God, we lift up to you, loved ones of Brian. We lift up to you, all who are in Ukraine and especially Lviv this day. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church in all its forms, that we may learn to follow Jesus by giving rest to the weary in lives of service that are gentle and humble of heart. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth and all you have created, that all things may come back into the ecological balance that you first intended and all your works shall give thanks to you. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people, that when the burdens of war, poverty, and hunger are too much to bear, we may do our part to offer rest and peace. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer violence in the streets and in their homes, that they may find safety and healing. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Uphold them and grant them peace. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, creator of heaven and earth, we join our voices with all that you have made in giving thanks to you, who shows compassion and goodness to all. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time now for our kids to come to the front. So if y'all would meet me down here and this is a special children's moment where we are going to be blessing Reverend Chelsea McCutcheon. So I'm gonna ask Keith to go ahead and Keith, Keith.
board chair, Keith. Keith, you can come up now too. <laughs>
speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds watch their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there no other has ever known I stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling, but he bids me go through the voice of his voice to I happen to know that that is the favorite hymn of my grandmother, Chelsea's grandmother, and I suspect some others out in the congregation today. It was beautiful, thank you. Today's scripture reading is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses eight through 12. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. May the word of God both bless and challenge the people of God.
This is going to be funny. Good morning, everybody. So I was doing some reminiscing this week, and I remembered the very first time that I stood in this pulpit, and I had the happy task of preaching about the Syrophoenician woman. Yeah, some of you know. And this is how I opened my very first sermon here. Hi, everyone. I am Chelsea McCutcheon, your brand new director of education and community engagement. I then talked about the scripture for a little while, but then I said, essentially, hi, I am your brand new pastor like figure. And one time in the midst of all of these miracles, Jesus called a woman a dog. Let's talk about that. So it's really only up from there, right? I guess that in some ways it is only fair for my final address from this pulpit to start with something along the lines of friends and siblings. This is the final time that I will speak to you as your Minister of Education and Community Engagement. A long time ago, a prophet told God's people that they need to be less self-serving and myopic. Let's talk about that. This text is one of the focus texts for General Assembly, which is coming up later in the month, and I can't read that it was given as any kind of coincidence. Megan determined this sermon series before any of us knew that preaching it would be my final sermon. The worship team for General Assembly picked this scripture long before that even, but it has served a good and holy purpose this week because it has kept me solidly from being self-serving and myopic as I've written this sermon. There might be some temptation to provide a eulogy of our ministry together, and there will be some reminiscing, but this time is intended as a homily. So one more time, friends, let's explore and exegete a text together. Isaiah is one of the greats. He's a prophet of the Hebrew Bible whose book is so long and convoluted and different that scholars have broken it into three distinct parts. But this one section has continually stuck out to me throughout my ministry. For context, the Israelites have come back from Babylonian exile, and they're trying to rebuild their lives in the homeland of their ancestors. And it doesn't feel much like home. These are the people who have suffered exile in different leadership. They've been pulled from their community, their ancestors were anyway, and they created new communities. And now they're finally able to answer these pleas that have been made for a couple generations. And they just don't feel like it's going to plan. So they turn to their religion. They fast. They perform rituals. And still, they petition God to give them the blessings that they think they deserve for following all the rules. And Isaiah is kind of harsh in his response. It's spoken on behalf of God, and the people are told their fast means nothing if they don't take care of the poor and the marginalized. That their rituals are worthless without backing it up with actions in their daily lives that demonstrate they're actually following the requirements of this God that they're proclaiming to worship. But perhaps this part, this part that Suzanne just read for us, is the best part. And perhaps it's what keeps us holding on as people of faith. Because friends, from time to time, we require a not so gentle reminder of who we are and what it is we are called to do. But that reminder is always followed by God's promises. God doesn't ask us to do things for fun. 
The God that requires piety for the sake of piety is nowhere in this scripture that I've read. We aren't called into service simply so we can look shiny or have beautiful resumes. We aren't called into ritual for the sake of the singing, even when it is tremendously good, or the beauty of the stained glass, or the yumminess of the communion bread. We aren't invited into this work for our own sakes, or even for the sakes of the people that we are blessed enough to be able to serve. Friends, we do these things so that we can dwell in our truest state of being, the imago Dei in each of us that is a constant source of love and patience, even when our ego wants to hustle and fight and get ahead. The prophet reminds us that we were created to dedicate ourselves to peace, to put down our pointed finger, to speak kindness and to love one another, to share our food and to be reminded that there are enough resources for every single person. And once we do those things, what is promised is not that we will get ahead, not that we will have an abundance of material resources. Not even that we will be the prettiest or the smartest or the most loved girl in the room, or boy, or whatever. But God promises that our light shall break forth like the dawn, that our healing shall spring up quickly, that we will never again feel as though we are outside of the presence of the divine. That we will be satisfied in parched places. And even that our bones will be strong. And these are not empty promises. But more importantly, they're not lofty goals for us to work on, for ourselves to achieve. This text was set in the return from exile. And so the focus is on rebuilding, not on creating something entirely new on our own. But friends, here, ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You will raise up the foundation of many generations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The audience of this word already saw and heard about the roads and the buildings and the temple that their ancestors had carved out years ago. And they were invited to make those old things brand new again. And what I love the most, I think, about this message is that it is an invitation to return to ourselves. It is not a shouted, damning presence. It is a murmured affirmation from a parent. It reminds us of the parts of ourselves that are peaceful and comfortable and stable and loving. Siblings, a little over 58 months ago, I turned up to this pulpit full of sass and energy and assertiveness. I was ready to immerse myself into a faith community that had long ago established itself as a force for good on the UT campus. My first Sunday, well, here we go. <laughs> my first Sunday, I was overwhelmed by the singing of the introit from the balcony. My search committee had mentioned how good the music was. Sometimes search committees can be aspirational. <laughs> but they were not in this regard. I was terrified at the prospect of working with so many other ministers in my first call. 
But all of them have become dear friends and mentors and colleagues, thanks be to God. Most of all, though, I was simply overjoyed that God had called me to a congregation so full of love and of hope. In the time we've spent together, you have certainly taught me a lot. I have been able to graduate from the Moss Bell School of Church Administration. I have been able to watch three very different senior ministers bring gifts and lead the congregation through transition and pandemic and bylaw changes and an old building. I've been able to sit with y'all and pray with y'all and laugh with y'all and weep with you and marry some of you and bless your children. Truly, I am as much transformed a person as I am a pastor. I hope that you know how much your love has anchored me and allowed me to remember who I am as a person of faith and as a leader You've allowed me to live into my baptismal vows and my ordination vows in ways that none of us could have imagined. And thank you. And as I transition out of this position, <clears throat> wow, I didn't think I was gonna cry like this. As I transition out of this position, I hope that we are reminded that God is always doing a new thing that being a little bit nervous is always good because it means we're leaving room for the Spirit to do her work. And I hope that above all, all of us remember that no matter what happens and no matter where we end up, it is always possible to return home, to return to who we were created to be, to rebuild whatever brokenness we might experience to come back to our deepest selves and be reminded of how deeply peaceful and kind we are, of how brightly we can shine, and above everything, how very deeply we are loved. Yes, you right now for exactly who you are. Shine on like the dawn, my siblings. I will always love you. Friends, the call of God, like God's own grace, is new every day. God calls us to give as we have received. We are called to respond to God's grace with generosity and action, and a vision of justice for the, our world, so that all of God's people are fed, safe, housed, and have what they need to thrive. Let these offerings become our response, and along with the works of our hands and feet, help us build where all seem broken to become repairers of the breach. For your convenience, there is a QR code on the back of your bulletin that will direct you to our donation site, or you may prefer to drop your donations in the offering plates at the front of the sanctuary when you come forward for communion. Whatever method you choose, please give as you are able.
holy and merciful God, we are thankful for all you have given us. We need only to call on you, Lord, and you will answer. Help us to re remain humble, to be your hands and feet, working to do away with the oppression, assisting the hungry, and satisfying the needs of those maltreated. You will guide us always. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Christ has not gone before us. And each week, when we are able to be gathered here again at this table and to dine together, we know that we are joined as one people of God. Siblings, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Please join me in prayer. Breaking this bread and drinking from this cup, gracious God, takes us back to an upper room on the eve of a turbulent day long ago when your son laid down his life for the whole world. But our action today is so much more than a recreation of history. Here, we touch the very source of our redemption and receive the present benefit of Calvary. Here you answer our cries for help and we are also called to help others, freeing the oppressed, holding back the casting of blame or speaking of evil, feeding the hungry, sheltering the unhoused, assisting the afflicted, 
and consoling those in anguish. Guide us to do all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Siblings, when you are ready, you are invited to come forward and receive communion. This table does not belong to University Christian Church. It doesn't belong to anyone except God. And by nature of you being born on this earth, you are welcome to dine here. The cup is grape juice and the bread is gluten-free, so all of God's children are invited to partake in this feast. You will see little cups of bread and little cups of juice. You can take your bread when you receive it, and if you would like to bring the juice back with you, we will all partake in that together. But if you want to take it when you get it, that is just fine too. Friends, come and dine, for all has been prepared for you.
Siblings, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of new life. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm just so glad all of you were here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you not just for today, but thank you for every day. Thank you for your prayers and your thoughts and everything that you have done for me and for mine. If you are looking for a spiritual community that is going to challenge you and push you and love you and hold you accountable and be there for you on the best and worst days of your life, I could not recommend a better one. If you would like to talk about joining, please talk with Pastor Megan this week. <laughs> or an elder, not me. Um, <laughs> I'll forget, but <laughs> I'm a little preoccupied. But if you feel the need to join today, you are invited to come forward while we sing our closing hymn together, which now we will all rise and join together in song number 453. <laughs> To the world. Oh, first of all, you're invited to a reception in the fellowship hall. I forgot to say that. Oh, I put my benediction voice on too soon. Hi, everyone. Please come to the fellowship hall. As you go out into the world, be surrounded by God's peace. Know that there is nowhere that any of us can go where Christ has not gone before us. And keep the words of the prophet Taylor Swift from her epistle, Speak Now in Your Hearts. I hope you remember today is never too late to be brand new. Amen. <laughs>